What up, what up, what up, Islanders? It's your boy T. I got Bombo. Today we got you covered with the ER to the waiver wires. That's right. We're talking injury reports. We're talking waiver wires. We're going to go ahead and lay it down for you guys and let you know what you want to do with those guys that went down this week and who to pick up to try to fill in some of those gaps. Bombo, week two was a brutal week for injuries. If you're a fantasy owner, I have. Some of these guys that are on here, it was ugly. Uh, big names. We're only going to cover big names. We're not even ha- we don't even have to reach. That's what's so sad about this injury report. We don't have to reach for guys and say, eh, he's kind of a big name. He's kind of fantasy. Route. No, no, guys. We have a lot of heads that went down. These are fantasy relevant players this week. And before we get into this list, Just so you know, we wish all of them a speedy recovery. We want all of them back as soon as possible. You never want any of these guys to go down, not just from a fantasy standpoint, but just a humanity standpoint. You know, you just want these guys are here to entertain us and we want to be able to keep them healthy, safe and entertaining us and keep it going. But unfortunately, the first guy on this list, Bombo, he's done for the season. And I'm hearing a lot of the talking heads out there. And it may be one of those types of situations where they're questioning, is he done for his career? This is the second injury to the same knee. And of course, I'm talking about Nick Chubb. He's done for the season. If you guys saw the replay, which we all know, they didn't show it for good reason. It was ugly. But if you are on social media at all, you know, you see it. It was really ugly. Next guy got on that list, Bombo, another running back. Austin Eckler, ankle injury, kind of a game time decision. He's missed a couple days of practice, but we don't know. He could potentially be a game time guy. Fantasy owners, just keep an eye out on this and just kind of pay attention every single day and look at those updates. Next guy up, Joel Burrow. He's got a calf. Week three is unknown. So the status is completely unknown. Bombo, you kind of threw it out to me in the pre-show when we were discussing all of this. You said you watch a lot of football, and that you do, sir. And you had no idea who the hell is Joe Burrow's backup. And I'm going to say right now, okay, for all the listeners who are probably thinking the same thing, going, shit, who is the backup over there to Burrow? Because that that was my reaction was Jake Browning, guys. Jake Browning. That's it. He went undrafted in 2018 and he played in Washington for the Pac-12. That's it. And that's as much as we know about this guy, we know nothing about this guy. So for those fantasy owners that may not have Joe Burrow, but have a part of that receiving core, it's going to be a little rough for you. It could potentially be rough, but they're going to take it easy with Joe Burrow because we don't want another AA Ron situation moving forward. Saquon Barkley, ankle out three weeks. That was, uh, you know, kind of a fantasy gasp for all the owners that have Saquon. But as of right now, it's three weeks. Next guy up, another running back is Montgomery. He's day to day with a thigh. He does miss a lot. So if you're a fantasy owner, just know that. Next guy, we got Anthony Richardson. Bombo, that's your boy. I know you love you some Anthony Richardson. You got a lot of stock in him, and hats off to you for jumping on him early, but he's out with a concussion. Right now, it's day-to-day, but there could be a chance that he's probably leaning towards playing, but we'll see. Well, it's a wait and And then the last guy, Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle went down with concussion as well. We wish him a speedy recovery too. That's a big list. That's a big list of Big names. These aren't just scrubs. These aren't like, you know, small time players. Which one or two can you think that just kind of hurts you the most or may hurt some of the fantasy owners out there, our listeners? Who do you think has that biggest potential just heart stopping impact for these guys? From, just from the list you were of, of names, everyone here is an impact player in fantasy and for their real life team. I would go. True. The obvious ones are Burrow and Richardson just because those are the leaders of the offense um, for their respective teams. But the Joe Burrow one really, really stands out. And like you touched on, it's the calf injury. King has brought up that calf injuries usually are the precursor to Achilles injuries. And there's too many mouths to feed in 
in Cincinnati. And each one of those receivers is a, is a high pick for fantasy owners. Burrow's a high pick. <clears throat> to a certain extent, Mixon is an RB1. If you got Mixon and you went zero running back, he's probably your RB1. All these people take a dive once Burrow goes down and Browning comes in. With Richardson, uh, you know, good old gunslinger Gardner Minshew came in and he was still able to, to throw it around and make Michael Pittman a thing, Alex Pierce a thing. But with Burrow being down and an unknown coming in, it really has a huge domino effect in the fantasy landscape. And for Cincinnati as a whole, who still has Super Bowl aspirations from two years ago. So Burrow is the main one. The other one is Saquon. A, because I have stock in Saquon, but also when you see him go down, any so here's the thing, Saquon PTSD sufferers, when we see Saquon go down and trainers help him up, we're thinking that's the knee or that's high ankle sprain. It can't be anything less than that. Knock on wood, crossed fingers, lucky rabbit's foot. They're saying it's a regular ankle sprain, more of a lateral ankle sprain, so it's not going to get worse. Uh, in fact, they tried to uh, play the game this week and say, hey, we're not going to rule him out just yet. You know, he, he's, he's a tough guy and he heals real fast. As of the time of recording this, listeners, he is not playing on the Thursday night quick turnaround against San Francisco. But they have not ruled out next week. But I think you're right, T. We're looking at it probably three weeks. You don't want to st- send him out there gimpy, especially if they take a really bad loss this week. You might want to do all you can to, to, to preserve him. But for all you owners out there that have a guy that's in concussion protocol, my only advice to you is stay by those uh, practice reports. Stay on your beat writers because they're going to be letting you know if the guy's in helmet, if the guy is tra- is working on the side with the trainer, or if he's just flat out absent from practice. If a guy's in concussion protocol and flat out absent from practice, that means they don't even want him jogging on the sidelines or accidentally getting hit with a shagged ball. So from what I'm hearing, everybody is at least active at practice. They may not be practicing, but they are there. And we've probably lucked out on a few of these concussion guys, but you're right. Anthony Richardson, that's what's going to happen with running quarterbacks. And the only one that scares me is Jalen Waddle, just because Miami's training staff doesn't do well with concussions. I don't want them sending them out there. What do you think when you see this list of injuries, what stands out to you? So you got a great point with Jalen Waddle. That one does hurt a little bit, no pun intended because of the fact that that medical staff over there has a very shoddy track record when dealing with concussions. So that's an excellent point there, Bombo. The one guy that I'm going to say to me, though, just the Nick Chubb thing. The Nick Chubb, for the Chubb owners, this guy, he had full ownership of that backfield. So he was one of those heavy carriers. Most of the teams Mm -hmm. nowadays are running back by committee. He was... He was the main guy. There was no committee. Of course, they got Ford back there, but Ford was not a major player in that backfield prior to Chubb going down. Now, in the game where he went down, Ford kind of blew up, had some big runs, which is great for any Cleveland fan. But for a fantasy owner, and that's what we're talking about, when you see a guy like Chubb available, you're drafting him high. One, because he gets he gets those long breakout yardage for you in those mad fantasy points. But a lot of that is because there's no Kareem Hunt over there. He's not splitting carries. He is that primary back. And so that was like an upside for drafting him. And that's gone. So that's a tough one. And, and I'm, I'm a fantasy owner of Nick Chubb. And that hurt. That genuinely hurt because that was the big driving factor for getting him. And I don't want to see his career end. Yep. Can't replace him. He's unreplaceable. Nope. Absolutely. All right, Bombo. So enough of that depressing shit, and let's go ahead and get into who's in our lineups. What are those waiver wire guys that we're going to go out there and get as a fill-in, a stopgap, a a keep-and-stash type of situation? We're going to throw out four names, and Bombo, I want you to hit on on a couple of them for us, okay? Number one, I'm going to throw out there. I just mentioned him just a few seconds ago, Jerome Ford, 10% owned currently. At the time of this recording, I anticipate that to go up significantly, just to be perfectly on, honest with you. Next guy I'm going to go ahead and throw out at you is Tajay Spears. 13% owned. He's getting some good pub. He's getting some good looks. We'll see. I want you to kind of lend your expertise to that one, Bombo. 
Next guy I got is Zach Moss at 14% owned. And the last guy on that list is Marvin Mims at 9% owned. Bombo, which guys are your guys that you're kind of looking at out of that four list and why? Yeah, T. So first off, if you lost any of the people that we were discussing in the injury segment, I'm not saying these guys are going to come in and replicate the numbers. Nobody here, none of these running backs are going to replicate what Nick Chubb was going to do for you throughout the year. Even even his handcuff, quote unquote handcuff, Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford was the kick returner prior to Chubb going down. So I'm going to touch on Jerome Ford just real quick. He did have 16 carries for about 115 yards and a touchdown when Chubb went down. I'm not, I so one thing that I hate, T, is when people say, yeah, but if you took away this big catch or you took away this big run, he, the fact is he did do it. But one of those is a 62-yard run. So if you take that away, he had 15 carries for 45 yards, which isn't Nick Chubbish. Like you were saying, T, Jerome Ford's percentage is going to go up once waivers clear. Um, I just don't want people to grab him thinking that he's going to be an RB1 workhorse and replacing what Chubb's doing. I'm going to touch on Ty J. Spears. He was being originally drafted as the quote unquote handcuff to Derrick Henry, but he's getting run. He's getting run in third down situations, two minute drills, and obvious passing situations. So right now, he has a similar profile to like a, I'll take one back for you, Dion Lewis and JD McKissick, and some of these guys that were pass catching back specialists. And of course, mm-hmm. if Derrick Henry were to miss any time, knock on what he doesn't. I think he would come in and he, they would actually have to change the offense for Ty J Spears because whereas Derrick Henry is a big bruiser, this guy is catch and cut, get open, run a route on a, on a linebacker. Um, you know, he, he moves, he's, he's not a North and South runner. He's kind of, you know, real shifty. So if I think if he gets his, if he gets his opportunity, he can definitely turn some heads in the fantasy world. He should be rostered in more than 13% of leagues. I'm not going to really touch on Zach Moss. He has a real limited shelf life until JT gets back, but he is the starter in Indianapolis. If he is on your waiver wire, put a claim in for him because that's a starting running back. You can't get enough starting running backs. But who I really want to touch on is Marvin Mims. I'm not saying that anybody in front of him is hurt. There's a healthy Jerry Judy and there's a healthy Corton Sutton in front of him in Denver. But he is the wide receiver that Sean Payton drafted. He didn't inherit this guy. He drafted this guy. And we saw glimpses of it this last game. Two catches for 81 yards and a touchdown. That just means this guy just is the deep threat. Just go down there and get it. And if you remember from the Sean Payton days, that's what Brandon Cooks was. And Brandon Cooks balled out for them before he got traded because he didn't get along with Michael Thomas or something like that. Sean Payton knows how to use those type. He knows how to use a big body receiver out of the slot. And he knows how to use a speedster going going down the sidelines. So I anticipate Marvin Mims not be someone that's going to ball out in your starting lineup right now, but you should pick him up, get that roster ownership up because what we have seen lately is the breakout rookie wide receivers towards the end of the year. We watched Amon Ross St. Brown do it. We watched Justin Jefferson do it. If this guy gets a chance and I anticipate the Broncos very early on not playing for a Super Bowl, that's where Sean Payton gets to evaluate the talent that he's brought in. When that happens, Marvin Mims may be a guy that you see just running down the sidelines for touchdowns. So get the ownership up on any of these guys. Any of these guys are somebody that can step in for anybody that you just had go down. Like we've said before, there isn't a true handcuff to any to some of these guys. If anything, there's handcuffed to some of these receivers. Definitely look at the depth chart um, outside of just the guys that you own on your teams so that when injuries happen, it doesn't become a catastrophe for your team. You know what, Bumba? I'm really glad you talked about Marvin Mims. Um, you know, he's definitely a guy to watch, maybe even a guy to stash to your point. Week one was not a big prolific showing from this kid. You know, it's week one. He's a rookie. You know what I mean? You're not going to expect much. He only had two catches for nine yards. That's not going to wow anybody. But week two, that Denver offense as a whole looked much better. I'm sorry, Cortland Sutton to me is the guy that just doesn't show up. I I don't know what his, he just wants to collect a check. He got paid and he just wants to go away and fade into the background. So he's not that guy. They thought he was going to be that guy. He's not that guy. But in week two, Marvin Mims had 
freaking two catches for 113 yards and a tutty. Thank you very much. Yeah. Even with two catches, I'll take that as a fantasy owner. If I put him in a flex or if I'm doing a super flex, hell yeah, I would be happy with that day. That got you 18 points. Yeah, every week, all week. So I like that. That is definitely one of those stash kind of guys. Maybe even in a flex or a deep flex type of situation, you're going to do something like that and you're going to play him because why not, right? Hey, we watched Deshaun Jackson make out of those types of numbers. Exactly. That's a great point, Pompo. That's mm -hmm. an excellent point. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and end this one. Everybody like, subscribe, share. You know what to do. We don't have to keep telling you. You guys aren't knuckleheads. Uh, maybe a couple of you, but that's okay. That's okay, because we definitely are. So for Bombo, I'm T, and we are out.